Well, all of you in the audience are probably yourself from being technologists and quantitative. You like to track a lots of things in your life. But how much do you really know about measurements that truly matter? Your health and the health of your loved ones. My name is Saeed Azimi, and our passion is empowering you to take control of your health. How? Introducing Dyno. It's nine integrated sensors and analytics. It's able to track 33 different health metrics. It works just as simple as a digital thermometer, and it takes only 60 seconds to get it done. It can communicate to any mobile device via, uh, via Bluetooth, or it can also talk to a 3G Wi-Fi sanitizing cradle. Let's just look at an actual demo. Bruce, he's going to demonstrate. Can we switch over to the tablet, please? So Bruce is going to demonstrate how the dime is actually used, just as I indicated, just like a digital thermometer. Behind me on the screen, you have a captured program that presents some of the uh, metrics that you must be familiar with as far as tracking your health goals. You can see the EKG, the heart rate, the blood oxygen, your respiratory response. And please notice that we also do blood pressure without requiring the use of a cuff. But we do many other complex measurements, like arterial stiffness index, your uh, airway uh, obstruction index, your uh, STR, PVC, many, many. All together, we do 33 different health metrics. Uh, go ahead. Uh, oh, wow. OK. You can see uh, Bruce is nervous. He's <laughs> up into 113. That's not supposed to happen. OK, take it easy. All right, so that's going to impact, definitely impact a little bit of his score. Uh -oh. So we calculated the score of about 0 to 100. If you get a 0, you're a zombie. And if you get 100, you're a Clark Kent. OK. We lost it. OK. All right. So and then we also calculated a grade for him. So he, re he reset the hardware. So why don't we just go back to the, that's, that's as simple as it was. Please go back to the presentation. So OK, the technology is cool. The data is great. But what you really do with it is that it's truly empowering collectively. Let's look at a specific market of ours, the growing and aging population. Having the ability to track their health has dramatic implication on the quality of the care they're going to receive. So as an example, we just completed a clinical pilot at an elderly care facility where we had 13 of their patients participate in using our product for a period of one week. And uh, at, during that period, our analytic software was able to identify and alert the facility of two abnormalities. Case number one was a PBC condition, and a second more serious condition is an arrhythmia. Now, interesting, these individuals and their care organization had no idea of these conditions. Even though the second lady with a more serious problem had a, a stroke back in 2000, and her condition needs to be monitored more carefully for a change. In fact, she's not being uh, referred to her specialist for further uh, study. So this is a real life meaningful use case of this technology and what it can do and how much it can save the system. As an example, an average stroke costs $38,000. All in all, $100 billion annually in total. So now imagine not just the money saved, but the pain and suffering that is avoided by the patient and the family. That is priceless a true step forward in preventive care. In addition to elderly care, there are many other markets that we can go into. We can help companies that focus on chronic disease care. There are now 17 states that pay for remote monitoring. And the Medicare is about to join the party as well. We can help hospitals with discharge care. Preventing readmission within 30 days is a big focus of uh, hospitals now as a result of the Affordable Care Act. Uh, in fact, we're just going to be doing another pilot with San Mateo County Hospital. And of course, there is a, a consumer play for us, as more individuals want to be empowered to better understand and uh, control their own health. 
All in all, a very big market. How do we make money? Through a subscription base, OEM and licensing revenue, which in fact we're just about to close such an agreement for China market, and uh, of course eventually data mining. We're opening up our website for pre-order for those early adopters. Please go ahead and uh, we'd love to have you as part of this revolution. All right. Anyone want to jump in? Uh, how are we going to pick between these companies? Um, uh, wow. Okay, so you spent a bunch of time trying to convince us that this is a big market. I don't think I have, you need to convince me that this is an enormous market. Um, how, so I'd love to know more about the tech. Yes. Like, so you're, you're doing an EKG, but you're not across two poles of the body. How, how are you doing that? Well, actually, we are across two poles. Uh, this is actually a three-lead EKG. Uh, it's your thumb, your index, finger, and your lips. Okay, so you've, so, yeah. so you've got, there's a special way I have to hold this. Well, you just basically hold it like a digital thermometer. You just hold it like that, just like you saw. And you hold it like that, and that's all it takes. You just put it under your thumb. What are the metrics that you wish that you could gather that you can't? So I would imagine glucose you can't do. That's right. So if you look at the market, uh, uh, the glucose is the only one that right now we can't. But, you know, we have the ability, in fact, because of the fact that we have access to your saliva now, and also your breath. There's a whole range of products that we can develop going forward that is, uh, truly sets us apart from any other uh, form factor. The whole idea of the user experience is it can be done in 60 seconds. You know, you're on, you're off. And the, the quality and the amount of information that you can extract and analyze, because at the end of the day, what you're really interested in providing meaningful information mm -hmm. to both the physician as well as the caregivers and provide you know, a true step forward in preventive care. So when, when a consumer participates in this, yes. is it a device that comes to them through their physician, or are they buying it on themselves and then? Um, yeah, so in case of like a, a chronic disease management, yeah. whereas I indicated there are 17 states that now pay for it, and Medicare is also going to join the party. So actually, you would get subscribed, just like your medication. You go, you go to your doctors. Doctor said, please pick this one up. In case of a hospital discharge, same thing, because they're trying to prevent readmission, because they're not going to get paid for it. As a, Walmart, as a result of Obamacare that's starting in October of this year. And so basically, they would pay for it. And then you just pick up the box and you take it home. And in fact, with the cradle device, the way we've done it, you don't even need a mobile device. It just has its own modem. And it just goes right out. Just take it out of the box, plug it in, off you go. So in terms of the information the consumer sees, it's yes. that dashboard of analytics? No, no. That, basically, the, what the consumer would see, basically, that's why we created this scoring, right? Zero to 100, yeah. right? And the grade. The grade, what it does, it tells you how well you stand within your uh, demographic. It's an A to F number. And we take into uh, consideration things like your, your age, your sex, where you live. We also can measure a number of external parameters, like uh, uh, the pollutant in the air, as well as temperature and, and uh, 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 a couple other parameters. And then we use that to create your A to F grade. That kind of tells sure, sure. how so, you stand within so, your. So if I, get a, if I get a low score, right, right. what happens is. Okay, are so there you then can cure the system. So two ways you can do that. You can cure the system and ask it, well, tell me what happened, right? So now we've got to go and show you what the analytic did, right? And take it down to individual 33 metrics that we track, um, which in the pack, by the way, we're going to increase that to, uh, to about, uh, about 80 in the next few years. And then it's just going to, you can, then you can I did have two choices. Take that number to your physician. Here's a report, just like what we did with the clinical report. You just gave them a report, and they took it back to the specialist. I said, here's what the device is saying you did. And then, and then obviously, that takes you to the next step. Is, is the device going to require FDA approval? Of course, for the markets that we want to serve, the chronic disease management uh, and all these other guys, yes, of course. And it's going to be a just relatively simple process called 510K class 2. Can you tell me a little bit more, again, about your initial sales process? Like, are you going after? Um, clinics that care for the elderly? Are we're going to be models going to be B2B, right? Meaning we're going to go after companies that specialize in those segments of the market. For example, the, agree the agreement that we have going right now in the process having going with our, um, for the China market, you know, it's a company established, they have 20,000 salespeople, so basically they're our customers and then they already have the reach. So it's a B2B model for us. What, one of the things, I've, I'm a huge believer in this for the for managed care where there's a professional involved, some of these measurements are pretty sophisticated so that I, I worry a little bit about and what, wonder what your thoughts are on, on sort of false positives and like 
net increasing healthcare costs because you're using more doctor time. You're you're maybe because the the pulse ox says something you don't know what that means. You run to the well, hospital. I mean that's that's where you got to build the device to be a medical grade quality device. And that's you can look at a bit our team's experience. You know we all have experiences in developing advanced uh, monitoring devices, and so the idea really is you got to build it to be quality. Just got to be the same quality as you get in a hospital, so that physician can trust the numbers. I and mean, that's why you do the FDA. So it cannot be uh, a gimmick here. Right? It has yeah. to be. Now I just worry about the physician more just me looking at that yeah, chart exactly. going like, oh my yeah. god, do I have something? My yeah, pulse ox is yeah. low, high. Right, so that's why, in fact, uh, we don't feel that people should really focus, because most people, I got 33 things, right? In fact, for the demo purposes, I didn't want to put them all up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then you guys so what am I looking at, right? So that's the same response as everybody else. That's why we create a simple scoring system with a simple grade. So your focus will be on that, right? And you just keep track of that. And then if you're interested to find out more, Obviously, you get the information, or if you want to give it to somebody else who's more specialized in the field, of course, you can do that at the same time. I mean, having having um, very young children, I think something I guess would be very powerful in the context of telemedicine, right? When Thank something's you. wrong and trying to figure out, you're on the phone with, with the physician. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm assuming you'll be able to easily um, um, share that data, right? Of course. So, what, so then what about privacy? Okay, so, so as part of that, we have, we're building three different types of interfaces. One is a direct into EHR, EMR system. There are standards like HL7. So we're building that. There's also an API level that allows us to go to third party. Who, who three, I'm going to cheat and ask you three questions now that we're out of Please. time. Um, one, who else is doing this? Who, who are you afraid of? Two, when you add new sensor functionality, is it just a software update, or do you have to actually ship new hardware? And mm -hmm. three, how are you doing blood pressure in two seconds or less? OK, so the blood pressure is based on a technology called PTT, pulse transient time. And that is a well-proven technology. It's one of the advantages of the, of the pulse transient time. It's very accurate. Anyone who's ever used a mechanical cuff, they can adhere to the fact that it's extremely inaccurate. So that's one. And then number two, who are we afraid of? Obviously, this is an area of big interest. We feel it's a big market. There's a lot of investments going into it. So the key is there, continue to innovate, continue to stay ahead of everybody else. And uh, I think your number third question. Software, do you need it? OK, you so need yeah. New so hardware? definitely we have a roadmap both in terms of software development, analytic development, as well as sensory development. So we're going to keep going forward in both of those paths. All Thank right. you. Well, we're out of time. Great job, you guys. Well, Give it up you. for DinoSense. <laughs>